are singing. We are singing. Tracking the tucker. Tracking the tucker. Crisscross applesauce. Crisscross applesauce. Hands in our lap. Hands in our lap. Voices off. Voices off. Thank you. Here's what we're doing in our video today. Elementary Academy scholars will be able to sing and move to shake them Simmons down. Sing solfege match pitch. Discover African American spirituals. Sing come and go with me to that land and sing Ezekiel Saw the Wheel, both very short songs. And then if we have time, I'm going to watch my clock very carefully. I'm going to talk about stuff that's going to happen in a couple weeks here. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is sing uh, Shake Them Simmons Down. So I'm just going to throw out some actions to you, and you're just going to get your body involved. I, on purpose, picked uh, and picking ones that we can do while sitting down, okay? So we're going to start with circle right, and then we'll do circle left, and then I'll let you know what's coming next. Here we go. See what you remember. Circle right, duo, duo, circle right, duo, duo, circle right, duo, duo, shake them Simmons down, circle left, circle left, duo, duo, circle left, duo, duo, circle left, duo, duo, shake them Simmons down, clap your hands, clap your hands, duo, duo, clap your hands, duo, duo, clap your hands, duo, duo, shake them Simmons down, stomp your feet. Stomp your feet, duo, duo, stomp your feet, duo, duo, stomp your feet, duo, duo, shake them Simmons down. Nod your head, nod your head, duo, duo, nod your head, duo, duo, nod your head, duo, duo, shake them Simmons down. Make it rain, make it rain, duo, duo, make it rain, duo, duo, make it rain, duo, duo, shake them Simmons down. Disco moves, disco moves, duo, duo, disco moves, duo, duo, disco moves, duo, duo, shake them Simmons down. Eat some Takis, eat some Takis, duo, duo, eat some Takis, duo, duo, eat some Takis, duo, duo, shake them Simmons down. Ready to learn, ready to learn, duo, duo, ready to learn, duo, duo, ready to learn, duo, duo, shake them all right, the next thing that we're going to do is match pitch. Unfortunately, I'm not at the school right now. As you can see, that's because the day I'm recording this was a very, very snowy, snowy day. Um, so I don't have my solfege signs behind me. So we're just going to use our eyes and our ears to sing solfege. So repeat after me. I sing, you copy me. Do, re, mi. Do, re, mi. Mi, re, do. Mi, re, do. Do, re, mi, fa. Do, re, mi, fa. Fa, so, fa, mi. Fa, so, fa, mi. Fa, mi, re, do. Fa, mi, re, do. Do, re, do. Do, re, do. Do, mi, do. Do, mi, do. Do mi so, do mi so, so fa mi, so fa mi, mi do, mi do. All right, we're going to keep working on that. Your goal is always to match pitch, make your voice sound like mine. Okay, um, I'm watching the clock, so we're going to keep trucking through. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about African American spirituals. In our last video, we talked about coded songs. And we talked about uh, Swing Low Sweet Chariot. We talked about Follow the Drinking Gourd. And how coded, coded songs often have some kind of secret meaning or secret message. So that um, slaves could tell people stories or tell people hidden secrets about the Underground Railroad. Um, without being found out that they were telling those messages. So today we're just going to talk about <clears throat> something called an American, African American spiritual. So I'm going to tell you really quickly uh, a little bit about them and what they are and why they're important to us. And then we're going to sing two very short examples of African American spirituals. <clears throat> so a spiritual is a song and an African American spiritual is a song that was sung traditionally by slaves um, in early American history. Um, they're, they're, they were influenced by both African traditions from when they were brought from um, the continent of Africa and also from their religious feelings and their religious beliefs. Uh, 
um, they, they could express sorrow, which means very deep sadness. They could express joy of some kind. It could um, be used to inspire people or to just have them express hope in some way. <clears throat> um, these spirituals were passed down from generation to generation. So what that means is that maybe your great-great-grandma knows a song and she sung it to her daughter, who was then your great-great-grandma. And then maybe your great-great-grandma sung it to her son, which would be your great-grandpa. And then maybe he sung that same song to your um, your grandpa, sang, sang it to his grandson. And then your grandpa sang it to you when you were just a little kid. And it passed down that way. So that's how these songs were traditionally taught. Um, and most of the time, these songs weren't written down, not like how Mrs. Isles has her sheet music, um, or you can like go on Google and look up the lyrics to a song. Um, you had to do it orally, which means just by ear. Someone sang it to you and that's how you learned it. Kind of like how we do often in our YouTube videos. Um, my African American spirituals were one of the largest and the most important part of American folk song history. So a folk song is just a song that has a rich, deep culture um, and tradition behind it. And when you look at the songs that came from America, um, a lot of them came from African American spirituals. And a lot of s music sprung from and were created because of African American spirituals. If we didn't have African American spirituals, for example, we wouldn't have had the blues which is a form of music. Uh, if we didn't have the blues, we wouldn't have R&B. If we wouldn't have R&B, we wouldn't have rap and hip hop. Um, so all of our music that we hear on the radio today can be traced back to these African American spirituals, which is a pretty cool thing. They were often call and response. We know call and response. We sing it every day when we say, we are singing, we are singing. That means there's a leader who sings and then a group or someone who sings something back. It might be an echo like we do. It might be something different. A lot of times these songs had some kind of religious content, which means they took messages of hope from the Bible, um, but it connected those with the realities of slavery, meaning the daily lives of people who were slaves. And the reason they did that was it was just help them to get through all the terrible things that came from slavery and just their day-to-day -day life. Um, some of them were coded songs, like I said before. Um, others just kind of reflected, um, the singer's pain or how they yearned for freedom or just how they were just raging against the idea of slavery altogether as a whole. Um, some of them were anthems, like just big, bright songs. Um, some were ballads, ballads tell a story, and some were jubilees, something that shows celebration in some kind. So that's a little bit about African-American spirituals. Like I said, we listened to two last time when we did Follow the Drinking Gourd, that coded song that told the way to the through the Underground Railroad to Freedom in the North, and uh, Swing Low Sweet Chariot, which is a song that had maybe different meanings, but is most likely about how people are separated from their families and separated from their homeland and how desperately and deeply they wanted to go home. So now we're going to sing a song called... Just double checking which come and go with me to that land and I'm going to sing a little bit of it mm. Mm, sounds like this come and go with me to that land come and go with me to that land come and go with me to that land where I'm bound first verse. Uh, the second verse and the third verse we're going to find really easy, okay? Because if as long as we get that first part, we're going to get it. Mrs. Isles doesn't have the chords written down, so she's trying to remember from last week Friday when she wrote this down. Okay, I'm going to sing. You're going to copy me. My turn. Come and go with me to that land. Come and go with me to that land. Okay, 
sing that with me. Here we go. Come and go with me to that land. Come and go with me to that land. Okay, my turn. Come and go with me to that land where I'm bound. Come and go with me to that land where I'm bound. Come and go with me to that land where I'm bound. Okay, this next part, our voice gets a little higher. I sing, then you copy me. Come and go with me to that land. Come and go with me to that land. Sing it with me. Here we go. I kind of remember the words, uh, the chords. All right, let's uh, sing the whole thing. Do your best. If you make a mistake, make it big. Here we go. Mrs. Al's going to try really hard to play the right cards. Here we go. Come and go with me to that land. Come and go with me to that land. Come and go with me to that land where I'm bound. second verse sounds a lot like the first verse, but we change come and go with me to that land to there's no suffering in that land. So the first verse is kind of like, let's go to this other place. So when we think about African American spirituals, they were stuck in a place that they did not want to be. So this song is about let's get out of here and let's go to that pla place. Um, where I'm bound to be, where my heart is bound to be. So maybe that's back with their family, um, and we're back home where they came from, or just a part of uh, the country that they could choose to be because they didn't have a choice into it. Okay? So now the second part, there's no suffering in that land where I'm bound, where I'm going to go. So there's no suffering. That means there's no pain, there's no hurt, there's no heartache. It's just a place of happiness. Okay? So here, let's sing this next part. Let's just do it. If you make a mistake, make a big there's no suffering in that land. There's no suffering in that land. There's no suffering in that land where I'm bound. There's no suffering in that land. There's no suffering in that land. There's no suffering in that land where I'm bound. Okay, the third verse. Peace and freedom in that land. Peace, calmness, a uh, place where everybody gets together and works together as a team. And freedom, a uh, freedom from slavery. Let's sing it. If you make a mistake, make a big. Here we go. Peace and freedom in that land. Peace and freedom in that land. Peace and freedom in that land where I'm bound. Peace and sing that first verse one more time just because that's the title of the scene the the song come and go with me to that land here we go come and go with me to that land come and go with me to that land come and go with me to that land where i'm bound come and go with me to that land come and go with me to that land come and go with me When I hear that song, I just think about how important, like we were talking about before, how important the tradi these traditions are um, and how they're such an important part of our country's history. All right. Uh, this song's called Ezekiel Saw the Wheel. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel Saw the Wheel Where the 
whole song. Ezekiel saw the wheel way up in the middle of the air. Now, one extra thing that I wanted to mention about African American spirituals that we didn't touch on before was that, like we were saying before, how um, African American spirituals came from um, religious, often religious traditions. So that means um, someone's church or the way that they worship. And back then, um, the people that owned the slaves didn't want um, African Americans to celebrate their faith. So they banned it and they said, nope, you can't, it's like, you can't go to church, you can't go to temple, you can't worship in your mosque. It would be like saying that. Um, so they would do it kind of in secret and they would hold small meetings. Um, so they would maybe sometimes have to sing it a little bit quieter. Um, they had to do it kind of like, like, like in secret. Um, they also didn't really have much instruments because they didn't have money to buy their instruments. So they'd either make instruments or they do something called body percussion, which is, you know, some clap in your hands is body percussion. It's just hitting parts of your body to, um, make music. So I thought when we did Ezekiel saw the wheel, we would just do a little step touch or a sway and touch, um, and clap as we sing, sing this. Okay. So I'm just going to hit a note quick on my guitar. Ezekiel saw the wheel way up in the middle of the air. Ezekiel saw the wheel way in the middle of the air. Okay, so let's do that. We're just going to sing it a few times and we're just going to sway, step. If you're standing, you can do a little side step, clap, do some body percussion. Here we go. Ezekiel saw the wheel way up in the middle of the air. Ezekiel saw the wheel way in the middle of the air. Okay, let's do it again. Ezekiel saw the wheel way up in the middle of the air. Ezekiel saw the wheel. If you want to change your body percussion, do something different. Maybe you want to tap your legs. That's what I'm going to do this time. Uh, or come up with your own body percussion. Maybe you want to snap your fingers if that's something you know how to do. If you don't know how to do that yet, that's a great skill to practice. Um, you can tap your arms like this. Just make your own form of body percussion. I'm just going to tap my legs. Hit my note again. Here we go. Ezekiel saw the wheel. and Phoenix. Okay, uh, so I'm looking at the time, and we do have enough time really quick to talk about something, one extra thing. Um, in about two weeks, we're going to be starting a bucket drumming unit. Um, I just am starting to wrap this up with Middle Academy, so if you have an older sibling, older cousin, older friend who's in Middle Academy, uh, their videos are just finishing up. So what this means is um, we're going to be learning how to play something called a bucket drum, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is usually a bucket that you play like a drum. So I happen to have my bucket drum that I'm using with Middle Academy. Um, I went to my local grocery store and went up to the bakery and said, hey, do you have any five gallon buckets, three gallon buckets you're getting rid of? I will take one from you. So this used to have frosting in it. Let's look. Pre-whipped icing and filling is what it says underneath my pink duct tape. Um, so I went and I got this and I cleaned it out really good. And now I can use this part like a drum. Um, I have drumsticks and if we were in person at on campus at Prodeo, I would have drumsticks for all of you. Um, but here's why I'm telling you this now. Because we're going to start this in about two weeks and we're gonna be doing several videos where this is what we're gonna be doing, bucket drumming. I just want you to start thinking about something you could use in your house that's like a bucket. This is something that should cost zero dollars. Nobody's going out to buy a drum. If you happen to have a drum in your house, um, it should work for most of us. If you have like an ice cream bucket, that would work great. If you have like a Tupperware container, 
that would work great. Um, I see some plastic baskets. I'm in my craft room at my house here. Um, that would work great. I see a cardboard box. That would be wonderful. That would make a really nice sound as long as it's a sturdy cardboard box. So find something that's kind of, kind of this shape. It doesn't have to be this big, but something that has a, a top to it. This is called the head. Something that has an edge and something that has a side. Tupperware container, ice cream bucket, cardboard box, something like that. All that would work. And then you need to find something that's going to work like drumsticks. So I have two drumsticks that I bought off of Amazon. That's what Mrs. Isles is going to use. You could also use two spoons as long as you ask your grown-up if it's okay to take spoons from the kitchen drawer. That would work great. Um, I'm looking around my craft room. I'm seeing I have pencils in here. Two pencils would be great. Um, markers, paint brushes, all that would be good. If you have chopstick, chopsticks because you visited visited an Asian eatery, I think that would be a wonderful thing. Um, so just be thinking about that. Have them handy in about two weeks. I think in exactly two weeks um, in our day two video, week 22, day two, I think is when we're starting and introducing it. So just make sure that sometime in the next two weeks you find something for our bucket drumming unit. It's going to be fun. All right, that's all I have for you today. We only have one thing left to do, and that is our train exit. So breathe with me, Elementary Academy. Here we go. Thank you for joining me for music today. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time with more music.